All right. So uh, let me get rid of this. Hi. <laughs> Doc Jones here from the Homegrown Herbal School. And uh, we're excited to have you here for our live webinar. Um, we're going to be talking about Remania tonight. And so uh, this will be available. You know, we're going to record this. Are we recording this, Evan? Yeah, we're recording this. So we're going to record this. It'll be available uh, for future viewing, even though you're not at the live one. But um, happy to have you here. Um, all right. Let me just. Okay. So um, just wanted to let you know. I'm, I'm trying to make my slides work here for a second. All right, my slides are not working. Okay, is it down? Does it want to go down? Oh, it wants to go down. Okay, I got you. All right. <laughs> We're having some technical adventures today. Um, about a half an hour ago, uh, my IT guy Evan's computer died, exploded, all the RAM melted, and it was all very exciting. Um, and so we usually do this whole production with three computers. And tonight we're doing it with one computer, and we'll see if that even happens. I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, I'm Doc Jones from the Homegrown Herbalist School of Botanical Medicine. Um, welcome all of you to the webinar. Um, just want to rec remind you, if you hadn't heard, um, that we are right now, early January 2021, we're having a sale on the Herb School, um, $100 off. So... If you'd like to participate in that, this would be a good time to do it. So, um, all right. Also, let's see, are we, uh, are they going to be able to ask questions, Evan? Yeah? Okay. Evan's giving me all kinds of good thumbs up tonight. All right. So we'll be, uh, if you have questions, you can just type them in the chat box. Um, I would ask, if you don't mind, that we sort of keep it to the topic at hand. Um, one of these days we'll do a, a webinar, you know, an Ask Doc Anything webinar, and you can ask me about your dog's lumbago or whatever. But tonight let's let's stick with the subject here, um, and uh, we'll try and address those as we go along. But uh, just uh, here's a little disclaimer you can look at. Um, this video is obviously for education and entertainment purposes only. Um, I'm not a physician, you're not my patient, and you probably shouldn't listen to anything you hear on the interweb, right? But uh, <laughs> you can read that. Um, also, this material is copyrighted, so we would ask you not share it without getting permission, if you don't mind, because that would be stealing, and stealing is bad, and you don't want to be bad, right? So, okay. So, we're going to talk about Romania glutinosa, and this is a, uh, a, a lesson that I just wrote here this week, last week. And uh, it's pretty typical of some of the things that are in the school. So if you enjoy this, this would be sort of a good little sampler for you. If you're already in the school, this will be in the school, you know, in a couple of days when I get around to it. Um, but uh, let's go ahead and get going. So Romania, oh, and I am, for those that don't know, I'm Patrick Jones. I'm a veterinarian. I'm also a traditional naturopath, a clinical herbalist. And uh, so we use herbs all day, every day, with uh, in the naturopath practice and the dog practice. And uh, you know, we we know whereof we speak as far as poking things into people and helping them feel better. And uh, so we're going to talk about Romania, one of my very favorite plants. This is an amazing plant. Um, it has a lot of names. Usually in the trade, they usually call it Romania. That's that's where you're going to usually see if you're buying it from somebody. Um, but they call it Chinese foxglove because it looks sort of like a foxglove. It's not in the same genus or anything. Um, the Chinese call it Di Huang or Gan Di Huang or Shang Di or Sheng Ti Huang uh, or Shu Ti Huang or Huang Ti Huang Shu. They have a lot of names for it um, that all means different things, and we'll talk about some of those. But uh, <clears throat> mostly we call it Romania. All right. The medicinal part principally is the root. We'll talk about that in a minute, too. Um, but if you buy Romania, you're buying Romania root. All right, that's pretty much what you're getting. It has a lot of constituents, um, and you can read those here on the slide. 
but uh, we, um, you know, we can look at these, and a lot of these are just foods, right? Well, not foods, but, you know, vitamins and, you know, essential amino acids and things like that, sugars and starches, and a lot of good stuff that's good for you. Um, but there's also some things that are really important uh, as phytochemicals medicinally, right? Um, just just a few that jump out. The alcubin there is a really important anti-inflammatory. It's got anti-cancer properties. It's got uh, vulnerary, you know, accelerating healing properties. Does a lot of things. Uh, the cattle pole, also an important medicinal, has a lot of. It's a monoterpene like the <clears throat> like the alcubin is, and so it has simple simple uh, uh, similar properties to the alcubin. Caldepol and Alcabin both do. Uh, Evan just had hung me up a note to remind you that we will send you these slides. Okay, so if it's on the slides, if you want the slides, just shoot me an email. Okay, that info at homegrownerbless.net. All right, info at homegrownerbless.net, and we'll send you these slides so that you don't have to be writing all this stuff down. Okay, that's our our uh, attempt to save the world from unnecessary writer's cramp. Um, and of course, the video itself will be available too uh, in the school, and also we'll have it on YouTube. This one. Um, anyway, we're talking about alcubin and cattle pole that are both monoterpenes, um, and they're really good for inflammation. They're really good for. Uh, they have some anti-cancer properties. They have some neuroprotective properties and liver protective properties. They do a lot of cool things. A lot of the cool things herbs do are because of those two chemicals. Um, it also has GABA in it. Uh, which is a uh, brain chemical. We'll talk a little bit about that later. Um, anyway, there's there's some other really neat things in this plant. It does a lot of things. Um, <clears throat> so let's get going. Uh, just to let you know, as far as veterinary applications, they're all the same. Okay, anything you would do with this plant for yourself, you can do for your dog or your cat. All right. Um, and this is an herb that dogs will usually eat pretty readily. It tastes good. Um, cats will sometimes eat it. Cats are a little more finicky. But uh, anything you would do, anything we talk about today, as far as applications for this herb, you can do. You can use it on your, your dogs and cats too. Okay. Um, and it also has the same contraindications. So things you shouldn't use it for in dogs and cats. So what are those? Well, don't take it if you're pregnant. Um, although the Chinese sometimes you just use it as a pregnancy tonic, but I would not recommend that. There are some reasons not to do that. Um, don't take it if you're nursing. Don't take it if you're diabetic. It can lower blood sugars. And if you're already taking uh, things to lower your blood sugars, you know, you don't want to combine that with other things that lower your blood sugars or you have trouble, right? Um, don't take it if you have liver disease. If you have GI issues, uh, probably not to take it, although it is indicated for a few GI issues, and we'll talk about that. Um, also, if you have a surgery coming up in the next couple of weeks, don't take Romania. In fact, I would recommend that you not take any herbal supplement if you're having surgery in the next couple of weeks. Okay? Herbs often can interact with anesthetics. Um, they can often interact with, uh, with your blood clotting capabilities. Right? Romania does that. It'll, make you, um, it'll interfere with your blood clotting a little bit. Not enough to matter if you're not having surgery. But if you're having surgery, your surgery doesn't need you to be leaking more than you need to be leaking. Um, so just be aware of that. Don't take herbs before you have surgery in general. Um, you you can, how do you take it? Okay, well, it doesn't matter very much how you take it. Uh, you can take the fresh root and chew on it. Uh, you can take the powdered herb and throw it in a smoothie. Uh, you can make a tea. Um, you can make a tincture, right? You can make a burrito. I don't care how you take it. Put it in your scrambled eggs. Um, but... Uh, the dose for the powder is going to be about a teaspoon or half a teaspoon a couple times a day. Uh, for the tincture, if you've got a 40 or 50 percent alcohol tincture, you're going to want to take, I don't know, 20 or 30 drops of that a couple of times a day, two or three times a day. Um, edible parts. Well, in China, they eat this plant, the root. Um, they boil it nine times before they eat it. And I don't know why they do that, but... Uh, <laughs> Probably because it gives them a bellyache if they don't. I don't know. But anyway, um, if you're eating it, you're getting more than if you're taking it medicinally, right? But, uh, yeah, they boil it and throw the water away and boil it again and throw the water away. And uh, that's how they prepare it. Or maybe they just do that because it's traditional and they're very traditional people. I don't know. Um, 
So let's talk a little bit about it. It has sort of purplish green leaves, really a pretty plant. It looks sort of like digitalis, like foxglove, which it's not related to closely anyway. Um, but uh, it looks sort of like that. That's why they call it Chinese foxglove. But it's very pretty. You're going to see lots of pictures. And a lot of these pictures are old vintage illustrations that I've gotten out of old, you know, 100-year-old and 200-year-old books, and they're just fun. Um, but anyway, the leaves and the flowers have sort of a downy, fuzzy surface, the flowers especially. Um, the roots are sort of tuberous, and they're the inside of it's yellow, the outside's darker, often very black. Once it's dried and processed, it's very black. Um, the flowers can be anywhere from kind of a purplish brown to almost a dull yellow, you know, uh, but they're pretty. It's a pretty plant. They usually get a foot tall or so, maybe a little less, six to 12 inches. And then the, the base of the thing is going to be, you know, six or eight inches wide. Um, the energy and the flavor of this plant, and we'll talk about energy in a little bit, but it, it has a cool yin energy in Chinese medicine. Okay. And we're going to talk about that a lot more in, in just a minute. Um, it has sort of a sweet, a very sweet, pleasant sort of very nice flavor. It's almost a chocolatey. It's, it's really very yummy, um, but you'll like it. Makes all your other herbs taste better. <laughs> So for cultivation, this is a plant that grows wild in China, all right? The original name was uh, Romania chinensis, right? Um, but it grows on this, tends to grow on the sunny side of hills in China, especially in the Henan province. Um, and so it likes, you know, fast draining, sandy light soil. That's what it wants, okay? That's why it's growing on the side of the hill and not down in the box, okay? Um, and so if you're going to plant it, you're going to want to have a really neutral, uh, fast draining soil. Um, and you're going to want it in a warm place that gets some sun, you know, partial shade to full sun will make it happy. Um, it's from China, so it can take some cold. It can probably go down to about, you know, 10 or 15 below Fahrenheit, below zero. Um, the only problem with the plant cultivating it is it's very, very prone to rot because of the the fuzziness of the leaves and the flowers makes it collect a lot of moisture and dew and stuff and so it can it can rot you know if it gets too much moisture so it needs to be dry um and that's again a good reason to grow on the mountainside right because all the water's going somewhere else um but so sometimes if it's uh if it's in a winter in a place that has a lot of moisture in the winter it's not going to do well either okay uh, it does really well in greenhouses. If you have a greenhouse, grow it in your greenhouse. So the roots are harvested, and this is a picture of the root. You can see how black and slimy those are. Um, so like any root, the best time to harvest the root is probably in the fall or the early winter, or early in the spring before it shoots up and starts doing stuff above the ground, because that's when most of the nutrients and phytochemicals and stuff are going to be concentrated in the root, right, in the fall. In the fall, the plant knows that everything upstairs is going to die. It starts putting everything back into the roots, right? So that's the time to harvest them. You know, when you harvest them, you can use it fresh. You can dry it and use it. You can tincture it and use it. Like I said, it doesn't matter very much how you prepare it. Um, it's hard to dry because it's really uh, gummy. You know, I buy, I usually buy Romania powder, uh, and that's very dark brown to black, you know. Um, and sometimes you can't get the powder and you have to buy the root. And when you buy the root, there's just these rubbery, gooey kind of guys and they're very hard to dry. And so we just grind them up and tincture them. You can't make a powder out of it, you know, unless you dry it really thoroughly, uh, which, um, you know, unless you slice it really thin and have a lot of time, I haven't had any luck doing that. So we just, <laughs> I haven't tried, uh, but <laughs> it's, uh, it's hard to dry it. Uh, we just tincture it unless we're buying the dry powder. Let somebody else dry that stuff. All right, so let's talk about the root thing. Uh, so traditionally, historically, and in fact, always, uh, herbalists use the root of, of Romania for the medicine. Um, and, and the reason they do that is because herbalists only read books by other herbalists, right? And that's what we've been doing for the last 3,000 years, so that's what we do. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but I'm a little odd as an herbalist because uh, I also read scientific research papers that are written by guys that don't care what herbalists think, right? They just like 
doing studies and experiments and writing papers about them. And so I read papers by those guys. And recently, there have been some really interesting papers about Romania, um, one of which, and there's a, there's a, a website down at the bottom of this page. You can go read that study if you want to. But some nice fellows in Korea did a study where they tested the leaves and flowers of Romania for the principal medicinals, in it, you know, the Alcubin, the Caltopol, and the GABA. Um, and they tested the flowers and plant, the leaves, um, compared to the root. And the leaves and flowers actually had more of those chemicals in them than the roots did. Well, so what does that mean? Well, it probably doesn't mean anything to most of us because we're going to be buying Romania, right? It's, it's not one that's super easy to grow because of the moisture issues. Um, but if you are growing your own, heck, I'd be using the whole plant. Okay, and so um, the only other thing is that I doubt very much that the root, that the leaves and the flowers taste anywhere near as yummy as that root tastes. Okay, so that's the other reason to use the root. But uh, and certainly the root works because we've been using it for three thousand years, right? I mean that's what all the all of the traditional uses and data and anecdotes and everything that we have about the plant is mostly from the root. So we know it works medicinally. Um, but it was interesting that the flowers and leaves are also quite good, if not better. Okay, so um, the taxonomy of this, if you're interested, if we got any junior botanists out there, it's in the, uh, obviously it's a plant, right? It's in the plant kingdom. Um, it's in the order Lamiales, uh, which is a lot of plants. The Astrids is a big group of those. But anyway, um, it's in the family Orbinchaceae. Um, most books you read say that it's in the family Scrofluraceae. Um, but it's not anymore. I don't know. They had some kind of falling out. They're not talking anymore. And so now Romania is in the orbit and Chasea. It's all very sad. But uh, <laughs> mostly it's in a new family because the only way to get a master's in botany these days, since everything's named, is to rename stuff, right? That's how you get your master's in botany nowadays. Anyway, it's it's you'll see different families that it's been in over the centuries. Uh, but right now it's in Orban Chasea. And uh, the genus, of course, is Romania. And the species is Romania glutinosa. Okay. So what's the etymology of that? What's etymology anyway? Etymology is the study of words, where words come from. So where did the name come from? Right? Well, the name came from a guy named Joseph Riemann. All right. And Joseph Riemann, and I don't know if I'm saying that right. It's a Russian guy. Uh, he probably had a much more exciting way to pronounce that. But anyway, uh, Joseph Riemann was a physician from Russia. He lived in the late 1700s, early 1800s. Um, and he spent some time living in China. During that time, during the late 1700s and early 1800s, uh, Russia had a monopoly on Chinese rhubarb. And apparently they liked Chinese rhubarb in Russia, and so he was in China managing that, okay, uh, that business, that trade. And while he was there, <clears throat> um, he found this plant, and, uh, I mean, he didn't discover it, like, I mean, the Chinese guys had been using it for 2,000 years before he got there. Uh, but he found it and named it, okay, in the Western system. And he called it Romania chinensis, okay, which means the plant in China that Riemann named, okay, so Romania chinensis. And so uh, that seemed a little vague, you know, and so later on other taxonomists renamed it Romania glutinosa, which instead of being the plant in China that Riemann named, now it's called the sticky plant, the gooey plant that Riemann named, which is much more clear, right? And so, <laughs> yeah, botanists need to get out more, right? So, <laughs> anyway, um, the Chinese name, and they have a lot of names in Chinese too, one of those is Di Huang, which means yellow earth, okay? And uh, in Chinese traditional medicine, uh, Romania is associated with the earth element. We'll talk about more about this in a minute. Uh, and the color of that element is yellow, and the root is yellow. And so, you know, yellow earth is, you know, that's kind of the poster child for the earth element in Chinese uh, traditional medicine diagnosis. Um, <clears throat> also, they call it Shu Huang or Huang Chu or Huang Qi or Chu. They spell it different ways. They don't. They don't spell it at all. They they use those characters. We spell it all kinds of ways because we don't know how to spell those characters, right? Um, but anyway, Huang Shu 
with an S or Wang Chu with a C is the same word. And it means cooked. Okay, so it means the yellow cooked stuff. Uh, because they often do cook it uh, to, to maximize some of the properties. Some things it works better for uh, cooked and some things not cooked. Um, I, I just use it dried and it works fine for everything it's supposed to work for. So I, I haven't gotten into that uh, nuance of it. Uh, also, the name Romania is also the name of a genus of prehistoric Jurassic ammonites. Uh, and uh, those are all extinct in their fossils now. And so there's no DNA evidence to do tests. But most botanists now believe that the Romania plants actually are not related to the, to the Jurassic uh, ammonites. So just to avoid that confusion, probably not related even though they have the same name. <laughs> okay, let's talk a little bit about Chinese medicine, okay, because we have to. Because you can't talk about Romania without talking about Chinese medicine, because the Chinese have been using it for millennia, and a lot of the references to what it does correlate with that system, okay? Um, and so I'm going to just give you a sort of a crash course on Chinese traditional medicine lingo, so that we can talk about this stuff, all right? So buckle up, and here we go. So first of all, in Chinese medicine, we talk about yin and yang. Unless you're in Idaho and we have yin and yang, right? But that's because we're in Idaho and we're a bunch of rednecks. But the regular Chinese people and people back east who are, uh, you know, educated and sophisticated, they say yang, okay? So we'll say yang. Uh, <laughs> uh, so yin and yang, what does that even mean, right? So yin is the Chinese word for the shady side of the hill, okay? And yang is the Chinese word for the sunny side of the hill. All right, so yang herbs are dry, hot, external, masculine, stimulating, okay? Uh, confident, they're strong, they're intense. Yin herbs are this cool side of the hill, right? The shady side, so they're cool, they're sweet, uh, they're moist, they're internal, they're female, they're nourishing, nourishing, they're nurturing, okay? And so that's yin and yang. And so in Chinese medicine, everything is about the balance of the yin and the yang, right? You've probably seen this symbol of the two tadpoles chasing each other, right? The white one is the yang and the black one is the yin. And you can see there's a little dot of yin and the yang and a little dot of the yang and the yin. There's, it's all mixed up. But... Mostly, in Chinese medicine, what we're trying to do is balance those two things, balance those two energies, okay? And so, if somebody comes to a Chinese herbalist, uh, they're going to assess that person and say, is this a yin guy or a yang guy, right? Because we tend to sort of be one way or the other, okay? And if that gets out of kilter, then we'll use different herbs from one side of the hill or the other, metaphorically, to to balance things, okay? So if somebody comes into a Chinese herbalist and he's this real extroverted, hot, red-faced, you know, dry-skinned, intense guy, the Chinese herbalist is going to say, oh, too much yang, too much yang, and he's going to give him yin herbs to cool him off, okay? And if uh, another person comes in and they're very cool, they're cold all the time, and they're very calm and passive and quiet, uh, then that's a yin person, okay? And And the Chinese guy might say, oh, well, we're going to give her a little more yang, right? Warm things up, get things moving, okay? And so you can use that idea as an herbalist because there's, for example, if somebody's got a bad stomach ache, there's lots of herbs that will fix your belly ache, right? But some of those herbs are yang herbs and some of them are yin herbs. And why not use a yang one for the yin lady and a yin one for the yang guy, right? As long as you're fooling around. Anyway, that's fun, right? So anyway, um, that's something that you can employ in your you know, if you learn a little bit about it, you can employ that in your treatment protocols. Um, a lot of books and herbal texts are starting to include that in, in the book. You know, you pick up an herb book and it says that it has a cool energy or a warm energy or a yang energy or a yin energy. And so you can kind of see what herbs are doing what. Um, so, all right. So that's yin and yang. You got to understand that. Uh, you also have to understand the acupuncture meridians. Okay. So according to to TCM, TCM, traditional Chinese medicine. According to that theory, there's a life force, a life energy called qi, right? Sometimes they spell it xi and sometimes they spell it chi. Um, 
it's this life force or energy that runs through your body all right and it runs through very specific channels or meridians in your body so there's little highways running through your body where the chi goes and these meridians all interact with each other you know this one's connected to that one and, and you know they go all through things and and um in traditional chinese medicine the theory is that most disease relates to imbalances or stagnation or insufficiency of the chi in those various meridians okay and so um they use acupuncture points on those meridians to stimulate the chi flow right that's why they're poking the needles in you all right and so uh and it really works i mean they've done tons of research on acupuncture scientists who don't care what herbalists think have done tons of research on acupuncture and it works okay we don't know why it works you know but it works uh, and the model works the metaphor of chinese medicine works they had to drag me when i went to the nature path school they had to drag me kicking and screaming into chinese medicine because it doesn't make any sense at all from a western trained medical brain that went to veterinary school it didn't work okay but when you apply the system and you immerse yourself in the system it all works and that's the craziest thing so it's really a, a very beautiful metaphor and the metaphor works and it doesn't have anything to do really with anatomy or physiology okay just let, let that go <laughs> but anyway so these acupuncture meridians and the chi that's another important part of it um and <clears throat> here's some of those meridians okay and these are only the 10 normal ones all right what they call ordinary vessels or ordinary meridians or normal vessels or normal meridians. so you got your stomach your spleen meridian your small intestine meridian your heart meridian and you can read these they're they're all named for organs usually because the meridian goes through that organ and has a big impact on that organ. okay and so if you have liver problems you know they're probably gonna work on your liver meridian okay but uh <clears throat> there's also other meridians there's there's so there's these ordinary vessels they call them or the normal vessels and then there's the governing vessels which are the uh no i'm not going to be able to remember them because i'm thinking in chinese uh but anyway the governing vessel and the conception vessel is the english words uh ren is the conception and anyway we don't need to get into this chinese stuff but so there's the two governing vessels and then there's a whole bunch of other extraordinary vessels uh that have other functions so the ordinary vessels tend to connect and relate mostly to physical stuff uh, the extraordinary vessels tend to relate mostly to spiritual and emotional stuff and the governing vessels sort of bridge the gap between those two groups but anyway this gets all very complicated and studied all your life and still be very confused but uh, just so you know there are these meridians these vessels flowing through us and acupuncture accesses those uh, to make the chi flow better okay now the last thing in Chinese medicine that you have to sort of understand a little bit is the five elements theory. Okay. So this system called the five elements system, um, has these five elements and each element corresponds to the other elements. Um, and it also corresponds to specific meridians. Okay. Now the earth element, so there's five elements, there's fire, earth, metal, water, and wood. Okay, um, Romania relates very strongly with the earth element. Remember the Dihuang, yellow earth, right? The, the, the color for the earth element is yellow. Uh, I don't know why that is. Is the dirt yellow in China? I don't know. Anyway, that's the, <laughs> that's the color they gave it. Uh, but the Romania is yellow when it's raw. The root, the inside is raw, I mean yellow. Um, and so it correlates to that element. And the outside of Romania is black. Right? it looks like dirt and it's moist it looks like i mean it's a dirt thing right and so um it correlates strongly with that element uh, and so let's look a little more so that here's those five elements again this this slide shows you the um meridians that relate to those elements okay so the earth element relates to the spleen meridian and the stomach meridian now these meridians also relate to yin and yang okay so the first one is the yin one, the, the internal, deeper, cooler one. And the second one is the yang one. Okay, so your liver is the yin meridian. It's a yin meridian. It's a yin organ. The gallbladder is a yang meridian. It's a yang organ. Okay, and those meridians tend to be on the outside or on your back. 
and the yin meridians tend to be on the front of you closer in so anyway it all gets uh, connected to itself um, these elements are also interesting just you know we're going to get off into the weeds here on chinese medicine for just a second because it's fun but this five element theory is interesting these elements uh, have relationships with each other as well okay and so on the outside of the circle you see these arrows and that is a nourishing maternal relationship okay so water feeds wood wood feeds fire fire makes dirt the ash becomes dirt right earth becomes metal right and then the metal dissolves back into the creek and we do the whole cycle again okay so that's a feeding nourishing maternal nutritive relationship okay when you cross the circle you can see these arrows going across that is a, a paternal fatherly controlling dominating relationship okay so water controls fire right it shuts it down uh, uh, wood controls earth you can build earth dams to keep mudslides from happening you know uh, earth controls water you know if you put enough dirt you can stop the water from flowing you know and so there's all these controlling relationships and so everybody has a dominant element okay my dominant element you can get on the internet and find you know a quiz that'll tell you your dominant element in the five elements theory okay and that's fun mine's fire okay and so um if somebody comes in and one of their elements is out of whack and well how do you tell that well you tell that with pulse diagnosis among other things uh, and we're not going to get into that. Well, maybe we will. Okay, so so there's 12 pulses in Chinese medicine. There's three on each wrist. Okay, so there's three on this wrist and there's three on this wrist. Three deep, three shallow. Okay, so there's six on each wrist. So there's 12 pulses, and those pulses relate to these meridians. Okay, so if you're feeling the fire meridian pulse, you know, versus the earth meridian pulse, you know, you can tell this one's way stronger than that one, or that one's gone. I don't even feel that one. Right. Well, that means that those elements are out of whack, okay? And so those meridians, those elements, are okay, out of whack. And so um, then you can say, well, this guy's fire element is way too strong. That's why he's sick, okay? And you'll have symptoms that go along with that. Well, then you have to say, well, why is it too strong? Is the fire element too strong because he has an overindulgent mother who's giving him, too, who's throwing too much wood on that fire? Huh? I don't know. Or is the fire element too strong? Because the water element, which is the paternal relationship, is too weak. Maybe there's not enough water to settle the fire down, right? And so you have to sort of go through some gyrations to figure out who's out of whack based on those pulses. You know, who's strong, who's weak, who's overperforming, who's underperforming. And then, uh, you know, you relate to the meridians within those pulses. And the next thing you know, you're doing acupuncture on the guy and making him feel better. Okay. It's all, <laughs> it's a very bizarre metaphor, but I'm telling you, it works. It's really, really extraordinarily interesting. Okay. So, uh, as we said, uh, Romania has a strong affinity for the earth element in Chinese medicine. And so it has an affinity for the spleen meridian and the stomach meridian. Okay. And those meridians do things sometimes that don't have anything to do with stomachs and spleens. Okay, just that's just the name of the meridian. So if you're at your Chinese practitioner's thing, and he says, "Oh, you don't have a pulse for your liver meridian," right? It doesn't mean you're you don't have a liver or that your liver's dead or in trouble. It just means that meridian has stagnation of chi and something's wonky going on. And we need to fix it. All right, that's all it means. All right. So that's what Chinese medicine is all about: balance. It's all about balance of the five elements. It's all about balance of yin and yang. It's all about balance of chi flow. And they're just very balancey guys. If you ever watch the Olympics and watch their acrobats, you'll know that's true, right? So, <laughs> all right. So now we can finally talk about what the Chinese use Romania for. <laughs> so like we said, uh, dark colors represent yin energy, okay? And nothing is darker than Romania root. I mean, if you look at this picture, that is black as night. Um, so black herbs and blue herbs tend to have yin energy. Um, and Romania is a very strong yin tonic. Okay. So if you didn't have enough yin, they would give you Romania to boost up your yin. Okay. 
Or if you have too much yang, they give you Romania to settle it down, cool it off, right? It's all about the balance. Um, so one of, this, one of the uh, evidences of having really good yin energy is if you have very thick, shiny, dark hair. That's a yin energy, okay? And so if somebody has very thick, shiny, dark hair, uh, they probably have, you know, they're probably a yin person, not a yang person. Not always. Some of those Italians are pretty young -y, right? They're pretty excited. But <laughs> I'm going to get in trouble here. But anyway, you know what I mean? That's, that's, the, that's the system. And so they use Rimania if your hair is not dark and shiny and healthy and thick, right? That's one of the things they use it for. If, you're, if your hair is fading in color uh, or if it's dry and getting split ends and stuff, they'll poke Rimania in you in China to help that. And it does help, okay? Another good Chinese herb for that is Fo Ti, right? Uh, fo T F O space T I. We have both of these on the website, by the way, if you want to make your hair feel happy. Um, the meridians that are most often uh, used uh, or, or impacted by using Romania are the heart, the liver, the kidney, also, as we said, stomach and spleen. Um, they use it for yin deficiency, like we said, because it's a strong yin tonic. Uh, so if you're too hot, if you're too thirsty, if you're too dry, they're going to give you Romania. Um, they also use it for stomach bleeding and uterine bleeding. Um, they use it if you have, there's a condition in Chinese medicine called rising heart fire, and they'll give you a Romania to cool that down. Um, if you have irritability, if you have insomnia, if you have a fever, especially a chronic fever, uh, those, these are Romania things. These are yin things. These are hot things that I can cool off with a yin herb, Okay. Uh, also, anemia. If you're anemic, Romania is great for that. They use that in they use it for that in Chinese medicine too. Uh, things you shouldn't for, use it for in Chinese medicine are if you have spleen weakness with diarrhea, don't use Romania. Okay. So if your spleen meridian is weak and you have diarrhea, also then you don't use Romania. If you have a poor appetite, you don't use Romania, right? Because you're already too calm too quiet too peaceful right we want to turn up your your thermostat not turn it down right so poor appetite would be an indication of too much yin right i don't feel like eating i'm i you know i'm not i'm low energy i don't want to do that see that's a yin problem you got too much so you don't get more of that uh if you have too much phlegm that's a yin thing right because that's moisture that's that's excessive moisture we want to dry that up so if you have too much phlegm you don't give them romania uh, also, they usually don't give it during pregnancy, although sometimes they do as a tonic. And, and I don't know. I don't. I wouldn't. Okay. I think there's reasons not to. But some Chinese guys think it's good for you in pregnancy. Some Chinese guys think it's not. Uh, if anybody ever thinks something's not, I'm with that guy. Okay. Let's not take a chance. Okay. So let's talk about Western herbalism and how we use Romania as Western herbalists. Okay. And uh, Western herbalism is a lot simpler affair than traditional Chinese medicine, okay? It takes more of an allopathic approach. So, you know, this herb's good for this thing. You know, this herb's good for sore throats. This herb's good for fevers, right? And uh, they tend to categorize plants by their actions, uh, and it's way less complicated than all the qi and yin and yang and all that stuff. Um, ideally, a Western herbalist understands some anatomy and some physiology and some pathology. He knows what the body is doing and he understands some plant chemistry. So he knows what the plant's doing and he can put that all together, right? That's I ideal. Uh, unfortunately, there's a lot of Western herbalists and there's a lot of Western herbalist education programs that just basically give you lists of plants and what they do. And you just remember a bazillion things and that's no good, right? That's not, that's not the way to do it. Don't do it that way. Um, it's better to understand what is the plant doing and why, what is the body trying to do and why, and how can we marry those two things and get some good outcomes. That's that's how Western herbalism ought to be done. Okay. And so uh, just coincidentally, we happen to have a school of botanical medicine at Homegrown Herbalist. <laughs> and if you're not enrolled already, that'd be fun for you, right? And we'll teach you all that stuff on, on really what the body's doing and what the bugs are doing and what the disease processes are doing and what the plants are doing. 
uh, versus just, you know, throwing lists at you and making you remember a lot of stuff. So swing by home Remember right now, uh, end of early January, 2021, uh, the school's on sale. So go jump into that. That'd be good. Okay. So let's talk about Romania in the Western system and how we use it as Western herbalists. Okay. So first of all, let's talk about the immune system. Okay. All right. So Romania has some really important immune modulating functions. It, it helps the immune system work properly in a lot of, in a lot of situations. Um, and that can be really important. And we'll talk more about this in a minute uh, for calming the immune system, for correcting imbalances and, and errors in the immune system. You know, if you have autoimmune disease, that's a problem, right? And, and Romania can help fix that. Um, and we'll, like I said, we'll talk about that more in a minute. But Romania can also make the immune system more efficient at not getting sick, uh, protecting your body from getting sick. It has some polysaccharides and stuff in it that can really help increase resistance to infections. All right, so that's good. So in some ways, it stimulates and improves your immune system for fighting bugs and resisting bugs. But in other ways, it calms and cools and settles your immune system so it doesn't do dumb, crazy stuff it wasn't supposed to do, all right? So, speaking of dumb, crazy stuff your immune system does, uh, one of the things it does is it produces histamines, all right? So histamines are chemicals that are released by basophils and mast cells. So what are those? Well, basophils are white blood cells. They release histamines, okay? That's their job. And mast cells are just basophils that don't get out much, okay? They just hang out in the tissues. They're not floating around in your bloodstreams usually as much as the basophils are. Um, but they both do the same thing. They release histamines. So when they see a pathogen, a, a disease organism, they say, oh, we don't like that. And they release histamines uh, to do two things. First of all, if it's an allergen, right, pollen or dog fur or whatever you're allergic to, the mast cells and basophils release histamines to drive that out of your body, right? So that's why when you get hay fever, you sneeze your brains out and you ball and wheeze and sneeze and cry because you're trying to flush that stuff out of your body. That's what the histamines do, right? And we don't like that, so we take an antihistamine to turn it off, right? Um, but that's one of the functions of histamines. Another function of histamines is that they attract white blood cells to come fight, right? we got a bug here, come kill the bug. So they blow in their trumpets, right? And the white blood cells, the T cells and the B cells and all those guys come running, the macrophages and monocytes, they come running to kill those bacteria and viruses, okay? Um, histamines also increase the permeability of your blood vessels. So they make your blood vessels uh, easier to get through, right? So that the white blood cells can jump out of your blood vessels and into your tissues to fight those diseases. Okay, so those are good things histamines do. Um, sometimes that can be a little much, right? Sometimes if you're outside trying to play croquet and you're sneezing your brains off, you lose because you can't see where the ball's going, right? And so you want to take an antihistamine. So Romania, and sometimes your body gets allergic to things it shouldn't, like, like yourself, right? <laughs> That's basically what autoimmune disease is, is your body has decided that you're the disease, right? And so Romania happens to be very good at decreasing serum histamine levels. All right. So it also inhibits mast cells from releasing histamine so much. Uh, and as a result, it's really good for allergy symptoms and it's really good for autoimmune diseases. Okay. Cause it just settles that down. Like everybody calm down. We don't have to be so crazy here. Right. It's modulating that immune response. Um, so let's talk about inflammation. Very similar. Okay. So in, in addition to decreasing the histamine levels, which decreases inflammation, right? Because when all those cells come running to fight whatever it is, you get inflammation and that hurts. Okay. So decreasing histamines is good. But it also, uh, Romania stimulates the release of glucocorticoids, hormones from your adrenal glands, which also are anti-inflammatory. You know, they give you prednisone and dexamethasone. Well, the reason they give you that is because it's like the most amazing anti-inflammatory in the world, right? Well, why does our body like that? Well, our body likes that because our body likes cortisol, right? Cortisone, cortisol, right? So cortisol is a hormone your adrenal glands release to decrease inflammation, okay? And so the prednisone and the cortisone and all those corticosteroid drugs are just mimicking 
imitating cortisol, which your body produces naturally, to quit hurting all the time. Okay, and so Romania stimulates that. Uh, it decreases histamines. It stimulates release of cortisol, uh, and it gives your body raw materials to make more cortisol. That's nice too, right? So it's not just yelling at the adrenals to make more. It's giving up the raw materials to do it too. Um, and it also uh, has alcubin in it and, and the catapult, which are both strong anti-inflammatory chemicals uh, that, that will also suppress inflammation. Okay. So I've used it, Romania, for inflammatory stuff. I've used it for allergies. I've used it for like dermatitis. Uh, but mostly I like, I like using it for autoimmune cases, you know, lupus, rheumatoid arthritis, uh, fibromyalgia, all those chronic inflammatory, my body's just mad at itself, right? Uh, and Romania really helps that. Romania is really, really quite good for a lot of those cases. All right. So we're talking about adrenal glands. Let's talk about adrenal glands a little bit more. It supports the adrenal glands. It feeds the adrenal glands. It gives them the raw materials they need. Remember all those sugars and little proteins and amino acids that were in there? Yeah, those are all things that you make glucocorticoid hormones out of. Okay, so it's really a great resource for your adrenal glands to do what they got to do. But it also stimulates them to do what they're supposed to do. It, it actually has an indirect effect, too, on the adrenals through the hypothalamus and the pituitary gland. Okay, your hypothalamus and your pituitary gland, the pituitary gland, they call the master gland of your whole endocrine system, right? He's telling everybody what to do, all right? And uh, and so a lot of the things that go on in your adrenal glands are, are being directed by your that hy hypothalamic pituitary axis. You know, it's all connected. And the Romania modulates all of that beautifully. Okay, and so um, it regulates activity of the adrenal cortex, promotes function, uh, promotes the release and the production of those steroidal hormones that are important, and it's just really great. So you can use it for all for the anti-inflammatory stuff that the adrenal glands do with the cortisol, but you can also use it for adrenal fatigue. You know, I have a formula called adrenal support. Um, and Romania is one of the big players in that formula. So it, it feeds, supports, tones, you know, strengthens the adrenal glands generally. So people that have adrenal fatigue benefit greatly from, from Romania. So how do you know if you have adrenal fatigue? I'll tell you a good trick, all right? Take a flashlight and shine it into somebody's eye, right? Just a little flashlight. I've got your little flashlight, right? You shine the little flashlight in their eye and watch their iris, right? Because what does your iris do as soon as you shine light in it? You don't have to shine it straight in their eyes. Shine it sort of at an angle so it doesn't hurt. But <laughs> anyway, put more light there than it's used to. And the iris goes, whoop, right? The pupil closes up. Oh, nope, don't like that. Right? That's what it's supposed to do. And it does, unless there's something really wrong with you. But watch the iris closely. And eventually, it'll get tired. It'll say, I, I can't hold it anymore. You know, Captain, we need more power. You know, and it can't hold it. And it starts to quiver and jiggle and shake. And then it starts to open up a little bit, just from the fatigue of being so tense. Right? If that happens sooner than seven to 10 seconds, you've probably got adrenal fatigue. Okay? And it's very, very common in the 21st century with people working too hard and thinking too much <laughs> and having all these stressors that don't have anything to do with the lion chasing you like the good old days. You know, it used to be we only got stressed when the lions chased us. Now we got deadlines and bosses and emails and traffic and all this other nonsense. Uh, so we're, we're in this fight or flight thing all the time, right? This sympathetic nervous system thing all the time. And, and we burn out our adrenal glands. And so Romania is a great, uh, a great tonic herb for the adrenals. Okay, Romania also builds blood, okay? It has an impact on the bone marrow where your blood cells are created, right? And it makes them make more blood cells, it makes them happy, okay? And so if you have anemia, uh, you can take Romania and it'll stimulate that hematopoiesis, right? Hematopoiesis is the fancy doctor word for the production of red cells. Okay, and it's important. You got to have red cells uh, to move that oxygen around your body, right? And so if you're anemic, you're weak, you're tired, you know, you you don't have any energy because you don't have any oxygen, right? Because your blood cells, you don't have enough blood cells to get this stuff around. 
give somebody a little Romania and it gets into that bone marrow and it's just like smooth jazz and chocolates, right? You get that stuff going and everybody starts to want making babies, right? And so <laughs> blood, blood volume increases, anemia goes away and everything's better, all right? They've done some really cool research uh, on Romania for people that have anemia because of chemotherapy. A lot of the chemotherapeutics really shut the bone marrow down, right? Because that's what you're wanting to do with cancer. The problem with cancer is it divides and divides and divides and divides. That's why cancer kills you, right? It's not because the cells are doing anything bad. It's because they're dividing so fast that they're squeezing out the organs that you need to be alive, right? And so chemotherapeutics, a lot of what they do is shutting that cell replication down, okay? And so that's great if you're a tumor, but it's not so great if uh, your bone marrow trying to make blood. It's not so great if your hair follicles trying to make hair, right? because we're shutting down the rapid reproduction of cells. And so there's been some really good studies on Romania with uh, chemotherapy induced anemias, uh, you know, cancer patients and stuff. And it's, it's very cool. It really works. All right. Romania also uh, helps the pancreas to function. Okay. It helps the pancreas to produce insulin and do its thing for lowering blood sugars. All right. Um, and that's great if you have high blood sugars. Uh, it's not, you know, you got to be a little careful if you're diabetic. Because if you're diabetic and you're taking metformin or you're taking insulin and you load up on Romania 2, well, now you got too much of a good thing. Right now you're going to have really low blood sugars and you can get some significant high, dangerous even hypoglycemia. Okay, so if you're taking, you know, if you're sort of a, Borderline diabetic that's not on medications yet, try the Romania. That's great, you know. Uh, but if you're taking medications for diabetes, for your blood sugars, be very careful and probably just don't do it uh, because you can get an additive effect, okay, with the Romania. Okay, so let's talk about bone health. And this gets back to the same thing as the anemia, right? Your bones are also making bones. They're not just making blood cells. And so... Uh, Romania does the same thing to your bone marrow for making new bones, new little osteoblasts that make bone tissue, as it did for your blood. Uh, and so people that are struggling with osteoporosis, especially women, for two reasons. One is that it increases bone marrow produ bone production, but it also, uh, Romania, and we'll talk about this in a minute, but Romania also has some hormonal effects. And one of the reasons your bone marrow shuts down when you're a little old lady is because you don't have enough estrogen. Okay, the, the hormones uh, affect bone production too. And so that's part of the osteoporosis thing. And so uh, Romania, just like it did with the blood vessel production, also helps with bone production because uh, your bones are constantly replacing themselves and getting strong and you know rebuilding and regrouping. Um, there's little guys in there called osteoclasts that are like Pac-Man and they're eating the old bone. And then there's guys following behind them called osteoblasts and they're making new bones, you know, so you're constantly replacing and reinforcing and strengthening your bones. Um, unless you have osteoporosis and then you're not and you fall down and you break your hip, right? And so Romania can be really good for helping eliminate and resolve osteoporosis problems uh, in men or women. It's lots more common in women. Uh, and also, it's good for healing bones, you know, so if you break your leg, take Romania, right? Because it has some vulnerary functions and bone stimulating functions. It has two different functions that can help bones heal, okay? Remember that vulnerary, did I say vulnerary before? Vulnerary is the funky herbalist word for plants that help things heal faster, like comfrey is a vulnerary, okay? Um, and alcubin is one of the chemicals that also is a good vulnerary and it helps heal fractures. Okay, so you can use Romania for that. Okay. Um, oh, I forgot to be watching for questions. We'll do all the questions at the end. Uh, <laughs> okay, let's talk about the hormones, okay? So some people have hormones and some people have hormones that don't work good. Uh, and so Romania supports the production of hormones. Uh, and it does that for everybody. But for women, it's going to support and regulate and modulate 
you know, estrogen and progesterone and progesterone and all those hormone levels so that women's hormones are normal and good. Okay. And so that can help, uh, like we said, with the osteoporosis, because that's largely hormonal in, in little old ladies. Um, but it can also help with the other symptoms of menopause, you know, the hot flashes and the mood swings and all the things that menopausal, postmenopausal ladies suffer with. Remaining can help those. So that's good. But it also helps young ladies. So if young ladies are having weird cycles uh, or anything odd in their hormonal balance, Remaining can help that too. Okay, so that's good. Um, and Remaining is a pretty broad-minded plant, so it's not just going to help the girls, it's going to help the guys too. So that's a hormone sometimes when you've got trouble with, you know, erectile dysfunction or, or sexual dysfunction of any kind, uh, lack of a libido, whatever it is, guys, uh, Remaining can help. So it, you know, a lot of the, and again, a lot of that's through the pituitary gland, telling the ovaries and the testicles what to do, right? It's, it's, it's a lot of those systems are very similar between the genders. And so the same herb that makes the women's hormones work better also make the men's hormones work better sometimes, if that's how they're working, if that's how they're doing their thing. And Romania is one of those guys, okay? Um, so very good for some of those hormonal imbalances. Uh, for both genders. It also has some important neuroprotective functions, okay? Um, and it has some GABA in it, which is a, a neurotransmitter, so that's good for your brain, right? Uh, Romania can be really useful in brain injury cases and stroke cases, okay? You have to do it right away. I mean, if you, if grandpa had a stroke 10 years ago, the Romania's not going to fix it, okay? But if you had a stroke today, I'd get Romania in him, okay, because that's when you need it. I have a formula, and it doesn't have Romania in it. It probably should. But, uh, I have a formula called memory and alertness that I give to dogs that have had strokes, and I've used it in some people too. And I've been doing it for, you know, I don't have tons of those, but I have, you know, dozens of them over the years in dogs and a, and a handful of them in people. And... Uh, if I give that formula right away, that memory and alertness right away, I've never not had a full recovery. That's kind of cool. I don't know if that's statistically significant, but guess what? I'm going to keep doing it because it seems to be working. Um, but Romania would also be good. Um, they've also shown lately some cool studies on dementia and Alzheimer's and Romania helping with that, uh, helping improve function, cognitive function, in people that are struggling with those issues. And so, again, that's probably the GABA. But there's other chemicals in there, too, that, that help with those things, okay? Okay, Romania is also, is there something that Romania doesn't do? Have we found anything? <laughs> it's an amazing plant. They're not all this great, okay? This one's amazing. Uh, but it's really good for the kidneys, okay? So there's a lot of herbs that will make you pee more. You know, kidney tonics, diuretics, we call them. That's what doctors call them. Herbals call them diuretics, sir. Diuretics make you pee more, right? And that's good. Sometimes you got congestive heart failure. you got too much fluid in your lungs. So they give you Lasix, which is a diuretic, makes you pee more. That gets the fluid out of your lungs so you can breathe, okay? Um, but, uh, and there's a lot of plants. I mean, about anything green will make you pee more, right? But Romania is in a much smaller, more highbrow, classier category of herbs that are not just, you know, bladder tonics, kidney tonics. They're kidney restoratives, they're kidney protectants, okay? And there are not a lot of herbs that do that. Okay, Romania would be one of my first grabs for that. Uh, nettle seed, probably my very favorite, but astragalus, chamomile, there's a few of them that will protect and heal and help restore the kidneys. Now, if you're in, you know, end-stage renal failure, they're not going to fix your kidneys because there's nothing left to fix. But if you're in a situation where there's some toxicity affecting the kidneys or infection affecting the kidneys or, you know, the early stages of kidney trouble, boy, I'd be getting the Romania on board. I really would. Okay. Um, and we have a formula called Kidney Builder, and that's what's in Romania. is one of the big players in that formula. Okay. So I rarely take Romania for any of those things personally that we've talked about, because I don't have problems with any of those things personally, for the most part. Um, 
I'm adjusting very well to my menopause. But anyway, <laughs> but I do take Romania all the time when I feel lousy, right? If I'm sick, I take Romania. And it's not because it does have a little bit of, you know, we talked, it has a little bit of immune stimulating, you know, help you fight the bugs. But mostly, it just makes you feel better. You know, if, you know, when you have the flu or you have a cold and you just have to lay on the couch and whine all day. Now, the women don't understand this because they don't do this. But the men, when you're sick, you lay down and you whine all day because you feel awful, right? <laughs> the women keep right on working. <laughs> but men are sissies when they get sick. But anyway, it's just that malaise, you know, that weakness and that fatigue and that general feeling of, I feel like crap that I'm sick, you know. Romania fixes that. And I don't know if it's the Alcubin, you know, with its anti-inflammatory properties or the Catapult with its anti-inflammatory properties or if it's the GABA that makes you think you feel better. I don't know what it is. I don't know what's causing that. But I know for a fact that when I take Romania and I'm sick, I feel pretty good, you know. I might still be sneezing or, or whatever the thing is, but I feel good. You know, I feel good enough to go to work and get all my coworkers sick, right? <laughs> That's why they give you micro, right? Spread the love. <laughs> Day quill. So you can go to work and get your friends sick. Anyway, um, it's really, really tremendous for that. That's what I mostly use it for. Um, although, I mean, for myself, I used it for all these other things for other people. Um, because they come see me when they don't feel good. But that's what I use it for personally, and I love it. And the other thing, and the last thing is, it just tastes fabulous. I mean, Romania is the loveliest tasting stuff. It's got this sweet, almost chocolatey, wonderful flavor that just makes your herb formulas taste better, and makes everything nice. Um, so anyway, that's Romania. Um, we do have a lot of formulas that have Romania in them. And just by way of shameless commercial announcement, you can, when you get the PDF, you can click on this uh, link, just click on it and it'll take you to all the Romania formulas. So let's look here and see if there's questions. Evan, where are the questions? I don't see how the questions work. So like I said, we usually do this with three computers. And today we're doing it with one computer. So we're going to find the questions, if it'll wake up. That's not it. You're not logged to the right account. Um, you can just go search for one of those. Here. All right. Pause it. No, oh, you're still talking. All right. Okay, so here's the questions, and we'll just go through these until you're also tired of it. You want to go home and go to bed, right? So <laughs> you're probably already at home, but maybe you're watching in bed. I don't know. I don't know. Okay. Um, so Wendy says she found Remania Elata seeds for sale, and is that the same thing? I have no idea. I've never heard of Remania Elata. You'll have to look that up. Um, the... Uh, in my experience, oftentimes, not always, but oftentimes, plants that are in the same genus have very similar medicinal properties. But you need to look it up because I've never used that one. Okay. Maybe they changed the name again. <laughs> Going for the, the trifecta of name changes. Okay. People saying thanks and you're sure welcome. Um, and uh, let's see. Um, Janice or somebody says you can buy it at Mountain Rose. You can. You can buy the root slices of Mountain Rose Herbs. That's a good company. Um, more people saying thanks. Uh, ITCS Mount says, what's the Romania tea recipe? Well, I just make it. I just throw it in some hot water and make the tea a teaspoon or so per cup. Um, Reverend Calderon says he's looking forward to it. How are you, Ryan? Hope things are going good back there in Carolina. Um, somebody asked if it's being recorded. It is, and you don't have to take notes because you're getting the PDF. I'm sorry if you didn't know that already. 
because uh, now you have writer's cramp. <laughs> we have a good herb for that. Take some remaining. All right. Um, Chandra says, can you grow it in pots? Yeah, you could probably grow it in pots. You certainly could. We grow it in greenhouses all over the world, and that's a good way to do it. More nice people saying thanks, and you're sure welcome, and thank you for coming. Um, okay. Anne says she sees an amazing acupuncturist every week. And you know what? Acupuncture really is fantastic. I do acupuncture. So I have a piece of paper on my wall that says I can poke needles in your dog, right? So I can use needle acupuncture on dogs. But on people, I do it with tuning forks, which is really interesting. And I actually much prefer that. And I don't, I don't know when the last time I was, I stuck a needle in a dog for acupuncture because I usually use the forks on them too now because they work differently and I think better. When you stick a needle in a point, that's what you got, right? That's the stimulation you got. But when you um, use a tuning fork, different frequencies have very different impacts on the point. It, it's really interesting. That's a whole nother lecture and a whole nother day. But uh, yeah, acupuncture is great. I did have needle acupuncture once from a nice Chinese man. I was on a cruise. I took the first vacation of my life with my wife because uh, I had hired a new veterinarian and I realized I could leave town. And so we got on a boat and we went away for a week and there was an acupuncturist on the boat lecturing and I couldn't understand a word he said during the lecture, you know, but he had slides and he was fun and he seemed like a great guy. And he kept saying, no pain, no pain, no pain. And I thought, you know, I ought to go get some acupuncture just for fun because I'm always telling people to get it. If they can't come see me, they, I tell them, go find a local acupuncturist and he'll stick needles in you. But I'd never had the needles stuck in me. You know, I always use the tuning forks. And so, uh, so I went and got some acupuncture from this guy. He says, well, what do you want to do? And I says, uh, I think that's what he said. It sounded like that's what he's trying to say. Anyway, I said that I have this, uh, this allergy fit I have every morning of my life for about 10 minutes where I just gag and choke and think I'm going to die. And then it goes away and I'm fine all day. And he's okay. And he lays me down and he starts sticking needles in me. And, uh, <laughs> Some of them hurt like crazy. And I'd say, oh, holy cow. He'd say, oh, yeah, very painful, very painful. And I thought, well, wait a minute. You kept saying no pain, no pain in the lecture. I, I don't think you understand what that no pain thing means. Anyway. <laughs> anyway, he did the acupuncture on me, one treatment. And I didn't have that allergic reaction for six months. And I'd had it every day for as long as I could remember. It was amazing. So acupuncture works. It's really great. Um, I'm starting to have them again. I need to have my wife do it to me with the tuning forks on those points. I got all the points right now. Okay, anyway, acupuncture is cool. Um, Diane and Paul in Orlando say hi. Hi, guys. Uh, more nice people saying thank you. Um, let's see. Yeah, Path to the Future says it's super dark. It really is. It's like black, the root. Um, Lisa says it's interesting. I'm glad. Let's see. Um, okay, so the dosage for acupuncture, Path to Future asks, the dosage for most herbs, for the dry herb, is going to be about a teaspoon. Okay, more or less. I mean, if it's around a teaspoon, I don't ever measure. I just get a teaspoon and get it some, right? Teaspoon or so, two or three times a day. That's the dose of the powder, the dry powder. And then, you know, I don't care how you take that. You can put it in some juice. You can make a tea out of it, right? Uh, if it's the tincture, I'd say 30 drops or so, 20 or 30 drops. And I'm going to do that two or three times a day, okay? All right. Um, uh, the King's Daughter says, what might rising heart fire be in our language? It, is it heartburn? Uh, no. That... <laughs> That would make too much sense, okay? Rising heart fire is a whole five elements chi thing, and it's, we're not going to be able to get into that here. They have all kinds of things. They have uh, uh, chasing pig syndrome in in Chinese medicine. So if the chi in your body is, you know, that's another problem. You can have chasing pigs. You know, you can have uh, fire in your kidneys and snowballs in your spleen, and it's all very confusing. But the metaphor works. It's, it's very beautiful and act workable. But it's bizarre. So, <laughs> okay. Wendy says, I'm enrolled in the Homegrown Herbalist course and loving it so much. So much information. Wendy, I'm so glad you're having fun. I'm glad you're liking it. Um, Path to the Future says, I think autoimmune is a phony term that is misleading. 
I believe there's a pathogen that has entered, which has triggered and continues to cause the same reactions. I don't believe your body is just harming itself for no reason. No, you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. Uh, path to the future. But here's what happens. Sometimes it is a pathogen, like people get Epstein-Barr virus, right? Which is mono, mono, mononucleosis, the kissing disease. It's a herpes virus and you have it forever. Herpes is the gift that keeps on giving, right? And so, uh, you know, that's how you get chicken pox when you're a little kid. And then when you're a little old man, you get shingles from the same virus because it didn't go anywhere, right? And so you're right. It, it can be a pathogen that stimulates this chronic, miserable inflammation. And the problem is that you get the chronic inflammation, you get the pain. That does happen. But something else that happens that truly is an autoimmune thing is that, for example, with leaky gut, right, you can have, and there's a blog article, go to homegrownerbalist.net and read the article about leaky gut on the blog. But leaky gut is when you get, see, nothing should be able to get through your gut unless it's going through a cell, through a receptor on that cell. So your cells that line your gut have little receptors for sugars and starches and fats and proteins and vitamins and things they like, right? And the receptors grab those things, pull them inside the cell, and then them shoot them out into your circulatory system on the other side. That's normal, okay? When you get leaky gut from stress or pharmaceuticals or illness or whatever, you get interruptions in the gut lining. And so now stuff is getting between your cells and into your tissues where it doesn't belong, okay? And so your body says, holy cow, what is that? What's gluten? What's a strawberry? I've never seen a strawberry before. All I've ever seen is, you know, vitamins and sugars, right? Because the cells are supposed to break them down. And so your body sees these foreign substances and it makes antibodies to them, right? And, and the longer that progresses, the more antibodies your body makes to more things. And the bad news is that your body is made out of fats and proteins and carbohydrates too, see? And so at some point your body says, oh, holy cow, we'll just, we'll just attack everything, right? And that is an autoimmune situation. It's not just because of a disease. Um, and the same thing can happen with chronic inflammation of any kind. If you get enough chronicity to that, your body eventually just says, oh, forget it. Or, let's just... Let's just attack stuff. You know, it's like, uh, it's like, you know, soldiers that are sitting at the next to the wall next to North Korea and the North Koreans keep throwing grenades over the wall. Well, those soldiers are on high alert. I mean, if they hear a twig snap, they're going to shoot. Right. And so what we need to do is get those soldiers drunk on an island somewhere. Right. <laughs> Let's get those guys to unwind and relax. So they quit shooting at everything. Um, and that's what Romania does. It calms things down, it settles things down. Come on, guys, let's relax. Let's go, let's go get a sandwich. We don't have to shoot things. Okay. And so it, it helps those autoimmune conditions. So you're partly right that sometimes it's not, you know, your body, it's not that your body just wakes up one morning and hates itself. It's that your body wakes up every morning fighting these viruses or these deep fungal infections or these leaky gut issues, and eventually it does get allergic to you. It does get mad at you and make antibodies against you. And, and so it is autoimmune. But you're right that it's not always, it's not like something voluntary that your body does just to be rude. Okay. So Joey Oaks wants to know if it's good for itchy dogs. Sure. You can use it on itchy dogs. Melvin says, well done. Thanks, Melvin. Thanks for listening. Um, would it be something that could help with uterine fibroids? Uterine fibroids are caused... Well, they're not caused by it, but they're responsive to hormone levels. Uh, so, if you, so in that respect, it might help. But if you if your fibroids are being exacerbated by hormonal imbalances, yeah, it would help. Um, but once you have them, I mean, it's not going to prevent them from happening or cure them or make them go away. But if they are responsive, fibroids are responsive to uterine to hormone imbalances. For those that don't know, fibroids are big lumps of tissue you get in your uterus wall okay and they can be a real problem uh but yeah if the fibroids in in the in the sense that they can be aggravated by hormone imbalances yes remaining can help okay um and here path to the future is smart she says try some chase tree and don quiet that would likely be better okay because that's going to help the suppress the estrogen increase the progesterone and that'll make your fibroids happier too Okay. Very good. 
Uh, Jenny Jenkins says the school is wonderful. Thank you, Jenny. By the way, everybody who's in the school is watching this thing for free, too. And when we do paid ones, they're watching those for free, too. So it's, there's reason to be in the school. And they'll have access to this on the school also as soon as I... It takes a couple of days for YouTube to process the live videos and make them real things, and then and then they'll be available. Um, Lisa says thank you. Um, Paula says, will it work for myelodysplasia syndrome? Um, I don't know. It might work for some of the inflammatory aspects of that. It would certainly be worth a try. Uh, Nicole says, are the slides going to be available without the video for the students? Yeah, yeah. And to everybody else, too. Just, just uh, um, send me an email. If you want the slides, send an email to info at homegrownerbalist.net. And we will send you the slides, okay? Because we're nice. And if you signed up for this, we'll send them to you anyway. We already know who you are, right? So don't worry about it. And I know my picture's covering some of the words. I'm sorry. Like I said, we usually have three computers doing this, uh, but Evan's computer melted down half an hour before the show, and we were all scrambling, ripping RAM out of other computers and trying to get that up and gobbled together. So usually he's cleverly moving my face and doing important things, but he couldn't do that because I was using the computer. <laughs> All right. Uh, Kathy wants to know if you can tincture dried Romania. Absolutely. That's what I always do. Unless I have the fresh stuff. I've done that too, but I'm usually using dry stuff. Um, my, my beloved Mary says fell on the ice about a month ago and got a concussion and was in the ICU for a brain bleed. Would this help? Uh, no, I would not use this for that because it actually can increase bleeding a little bit. I would probably use Yarrow and Shepherd's Purse for that. Maybe some bugle weed. Um, we have a, a uh, formula on the website called bleeding that's very good for that kind of stuff. Okay. Nancy says she missed the beginning and she'll see me later. We'll see you later. Kathy says, can we grow it? Yep. We talked about that earlier on. You can grow it. Um, it'll go down to about 10 or 15 below zero Fahrenheit. But you have to keep it dry. It doesn't like moisture in the winter. If you have a wet, snowy winter, you'll probably, it'll probably rot and die. Uh, but you can go back and hear and read about that. Um, when you said it's good for strokes, would it also be good for brain hemorrhage? Um, so, like I said, it can increase hemorrhage a little bit. So for a hemorrhagic stroke, I'd probably want that hemorrhagic part of it to be over before I gave the Romania. For, a, for an ischemic stroke, I'd use it right away. Um, okay. Melvin says, did you say Homegrown will be having another sale soon? We're still having a sale right now, early January 2021. The school's 100 bucks off. You're crazy if you don't sign up at that price. All right. Um, we probably won't have another sale for a while. There are also some kits and herbs. Some other things are still on sale a little bit. Um, Kathy says, dosage. We already talked about that. Teaspoon of the dry powder, third, half a teaspoon of the tincture, 30 drops of the tincture. Uh, Kathy says, what part of the plant? Uh, the root mostly, but the whole plant's medicinal. We talked about that earlier, and you can watch that too. Uh, where do I get Romania from? Um, I buy it from a number of sources that are good. Mountain Rose Herbs Romania is good. Monterey Bay Herbs are good. Uh, Western Botanicals is good. Um, where are we at? I lost it. Okay. Um, by the way, remember... If you like this program, it would be really great if you clicked the little like button and you subscribe to the channel. That helps us to be able to do these videos. It helps us with uh, YouTube and the visibility. More people will see it if you're liking it and subscribing. And, it, and we make a nickel or something if you do, and that's good, too. It helps us do what we're doing. We can buy some more RAM for Evan's computer that melted, so that would be great. Uh, <laughs> um, Janice is going to bed. She's too tired. Good night, Janice. We'll see you tomorrow. Uh, Sharon wants to know if this would help with Hashimoto's thyroiditis. Yeah, I would use that for Hashimoto's thyroiditis. You bet. Um, let's see, because that's an autoimmune inflammatory thing, for those that don't know. Uh, Rough Hewn Homestead says she's just coming in late. But yeah, you can watch the whole thing later. Um, are there any other contraindications with other herbs? Uh, not not much. I mean, if the other herb is doing something opposite, I obviously wouldn't. You know, you don't take things that are doing different things on purpose. 
Um, but Romania is very good as a sort of a catalyst and a harmonizer in herb formulas because it has a lot of impact on the endocrine system and it's kind of nice and it makes them taste better. Um, Carmen says, I have thyroid problems and weak bones. Can't gain any weight. Is Romania good for me? Um, well, it'll help your bones. It sounds like you might have a, an excess thyroid problem. Um, and Romania won't suppress the thyroid. If you're not gaining weight, if you can't gain weight and have thyroid problems, I would assume that's because you have too much thyroid. Um, there are some herbs that can help with that. Uh, if that's what's going on, you'll have to talk to your doctor and see what's going on. But if you have too much thyroid, motherwort can help that. Bugleweed can help that. Lemon balm can help that. There's some herbs that suppress thyroid function a little bit. Um, Faye wants to know if it grows as a green or if we're using the root. You're mostly going to use the root. That's what's available. If you're growing your own, you can use the whole plant. We talked about that earlier in the presentation. The whole plant's medicinal, but the root is almost always what you're buying. Lori says, thanks. You're welcome, Lori. Um, Naturally, yours says, glad to hear you say you used to tuning forks. I love and use them. Amazing what they can do. Yeah, it's they're amazing. The tuning forks for acupuncture are the bomb. Uh, Pam says, thanks. Um, can you take it daily or should you stop for periods of time? That's a good question about any herb. So my advice on that would be if you're taking any herb long term, and Romania is safe to take long term. It's not like you have to worry about it. Um, but if you're taking anything long term, I would recommend taking a day off every week or two, no matter what the herb is, to just give your body kind of a break. And then, you know, like don't take it on Sundays or every other Sunday. And that gives your body a break to kind of, and then it, it'll work better Monday morning, you know. Okay. Um, do you have any suggestions for resources about Chinese medicine for beginners? Um, well, I don't know. I learned it all in naturopath school for beginners. Um, I don't know. I mean, I guess there's plenty of internet resources. Uh, I don't know of a good, super good. There's a good book called the web that has no weaver that kind of explains the whole thing. That's fun. Um, and Michael Tierra wrote a good book called the way of Chinese herbs. That's good. That's a good resource. Read that one. Um, how does Epstein Barr show up later in life? I had mono when I was seven. Yeah, everybody did. I mean, it's a very common virus. A lot of times it shows up as, a lot of times it doesn't show up at all, you know, and you still test positive for it. But a lot of times it shows up as chronic fatigue and fibromyalgia and, and other things like that. So that's the bad way it shows up. Um, Rough Haven says, Rough Hewn Homestead says, how, oh, we already did that. Um, Diane says, thanks. Um, it sounds like, Sherry says, it sounds like it good, might be good for COVID long haulers. What do you think? Yeah, you bet, because it suppresses histamines. It probably suppresses cytokines a little bit. It does some immune stimulation. It'll make you feel better. I would take it. Um, Faye says, is the dose for rheumatoid arthritis the same as other dosing? Yep, same thing. Um, Mike says, can it do anything for a failed fundoplication? I don't know. I don't know what that even means. That's a surgical procedure, I think. Um, I don't know the answer to that. If you send me an email, I'll look it up. Um, will it help with Parkinson's disease? I've never tried it for that. It does have some GABA in it. It might help, but I haven't tried it for that. Um, just want to mention, too, we are going to do another webinar here in a couple of weeks on, and it'll be a paid webinar. Uh, but it'll be well worth uh, getting into and the, on herbal cleanses and the pros and cons and the do's and don'ts. If anybody wants to tune in for that, we'll be sending out an email about that. Uh, are there any students for one, any discounts for one student on the homegrown herbalist course? Yes. So, so we used to just have one pricing level uh, and we'd let two people in for that price. And some people just didn't have a buddy they could do it with. And so we have added a second pricing level for a single student. So single students are $6.99 and doubles are $8.99. But right now, early January 2021, it's 100 bucks off. Uh, so I would, yeah, and that's for either, you know, 100 bucks off for either one of those. So yeah, you can do it by yourself or you can do it with somebody else and the prices are different. Just go to homegrownerbalist.net and click on 
our sc online school and you'll see. Um, and Utah Petroleum Association <laughs> says, wow, that's amazing that the whole association is listening. If my two sisters and I want to do it and take the course, is there a discount for three people? Sure, why not? Send us an email. We'll figure it out. Uh, info at homegrownerbless.net if it's your sisters, okay? We're not doing that if it's your neighbor lady, but if it's your sister, we'll do it because we like your sister. Okay. Um, can you take Romania with glucosamine, chondroitin, and with MSN? You bet. You bet. Those will help your joints not hurt too. Um, so I, ITCS Mount says you can find Chinese herbal medicine for beginners by Carrie Chalhan on Amazon for 15, 11 and a half bucks. There you go. Somebody was asking about good Chinese medicine resources. Chinese herbal medicine for beginners by Carrie Chauhan, Chauhan, C-H-A-U-H-A-N on Amazon. There you go. Okay. So Mike says, oh, he's talking about that. Oh, okay. So he, yeah, okay. He's talking about that surgery, the, the, the fundoplication. Yeah, so they're playing with the fundus of your stomach. I get it. There's other funduses, so I don't ever know what fundus people are talking about. So yeah, failed fundoplication. Uh, so they raised your stomach around the esophagus so you don't have uh, gastric reflux. Uh, I don't know if it'll help with that or not, Mike. Um, won't hurt you to try it, but I don't know if it'll help with that. It does help with stomach ulcers. Um, I might try our digestive formula. If you have gastric reflux, if you have acid reflux, um, I have a lot of people taking our digestive formula and having very good success with acid reflux. I would recommend the powdered version of that for that condition versus the tincture. The tincture is good too, but the powder is really good. It's got some other things that are just sort of soothing mechanically. But I've had some people that have serious acid reflux and regurgitation that that stomach, I mean, that uh, digestive formula, she's called digestive support, uh, works really well. So Anne says, considering TCM, which is traditional Chinese medicine, what if a person has a strong voice and is energetic, but is often also cold, especially in the extremities, uh, should or shouldn't take Romania? I'd take it oh, for your menopause. I would take it. Um, the voice has less to do with it than the cold. I, I'm, I'm looking at the cold and saying you're probably more yinny. But yeah, I, I don't think it matters. I, I think, uh, you know, the Chinese medicine stuff is great, but the Romanian is not going to hurt you, you know, if, if you're just because you're cold sometimes. Um, if you're a yin person, you can still take Romania. Uh, but there's other things you can take for menopause too, red clover. There's a lot of things you can take for menopause symptoms. We have a formula called female menopause, not to be confused with male menopause, which is also a thing, but we don't have a formula for it. Um, but female menopause is a formula on the website for those symptoms. Um, Ann wants to know if all the courses are in the school and, uh, yeah, they're all in the school. Everything I ever do anywhere. If I do a, f a talk on some prepper convention or some website for somebody else, everything I ever do goes on the school. So you always have access to it. Um, and certainly all the YouTube stuff's on the school and all of the, uh, other, stuff we do and lots, you know, there's like 50 lessons on systemic disease and stuff. Um, so we're, uh, let's see, are there any other questions? Let me see that mouse for a minute. I got to click out of something weird happened here. I haven't stole my mouse. Okay. Um, Linda Mount says for leaky gut, the gaps diet cookbook. We also have a leaky gut kit. Go to the go to the blog article and read about leaky gut, and that'll explain it to you. We've had good luck with that leaky gut kit. Um, Kathy says, since the root has polysaccharides, do you have to double the system to tincture? Uh, no, I just tincture it regular. It works great. Um, Nicole says the course the courses are amazing in the school. Thank you, Nicole. I'm glad you're enjoying it. Um, we're enjoying doing it with you. The uh, so like I said, the school has, um, there's 50 core lessons on everything from body systems and anatomy, physiology, disease processes, 
uh, individual herbs like this one, uh, all kinds of stuff. There's a whole series on medicine making. There's a whole series on wound management. There's lots of great stuff. Um, Scott says, can't speak to your Romania, but your nettle seed leaf tincture is really tasty this time around. Good. <laughs> Glad you're enjoying it. Um, Betty wants to know if it would help if I if I had a hysterectomy. Would Romania help, I assume is what you mean, if you've had a hysterectomy? Well, it depends on what you're helping. I mean, it would help for a lot of the things it does. If you don't have any ovaries anymore, it won't help your ovaries do their thing anymore, obviously. But sometimes they do a hysterectomy and they leave the ovaries, and then Romania would still have the hormonal impacts. Um, but all the other stuff that Romania does, it'll still do if you've had a hysterectomy, you bet all the anti-inflammatory and blood sugar and all those other things we talked about. So, all right. Well, it looks like uh, we're running out of questions here. and People are going to bed and nodding off. One thing that our lectures are really good for is insomnia, I've found. So if you can't sleep, just turn Doc on and he'll yammer on about herbs for an hour and you'll be dead to the world in no time. So. <laughs> Don't listen while you're driving, okay? But <laughs> anyway, we encourage you. Uh, swing by homegrownherbalist.net. Your support helps us do what we're doing. Um, and, uh, you know, we have uh, about 80 herb formulas and about that many single herb tinctures that can help you with all kinds of fun things. Um, and, of course, we have the Homegrown Herbalist School of Botanical Medicine you can read about there. There's blog articles there. We have the YouTube channel. Please like and subscribe like this video and that'll help us okay that that helps us do what we're doing um rough hewn homestead says i'm a graduate of the school and it is wonderful thank you hon. uh pam says i'm recovering from a broken ankle and foot i've been taking cat's claw combination uh and additional herbs for helping healing the bones any other ideas uh yeah i would i would use romania but i would also if you're healing bones something really great for that is comfrey uh, we have a comfrey tincture that you could just spray on topically and it would soak right into your tissue or you can take it internally if you want. There's some controversy about that, which I think is mostly nonsense, but that's another lecture. Um, but the chemical allantoin, which is what's healing the bones in comfrey, that blows right through your tissues. It doesn't care if you have skin. It'll go right through if you put the tincture on. So you can use it topically. Um, we also have a formula called Strong Bones. If you're a female and elderly, that would probably help you too for that. Um, so Jenny says, thanks for introducing me to a new herb. Thanks for listening and for wanting to meet new herbs. So very good. Um, more people saying thanks. Thanks guys. Appreciate you coming. 